Um, when I when I did get going this morning after the sun came up and I had a cup of coffee, I uh, I I uh, think I got everything squared away. I um, I ran the halyard right and, and set a double reef main, and I'm gonna set it reefed like that until I get to Bermuda. Um, I'm never gonna put up a full main again. I just hate reefing that thing, or or at least not at night. I'm not. I'm always gonna reef it before night. Um, what else did I do? I uh, the uh, the jib line was no longer long enough to get to the winches and to the cockpit, so I uh, learned a new knot, uh, and I am so pleased. It is the most incredible knot. It is called the Tarek Bend. Um, this is the nearest thing to a perfect bend. There is no other so strong or secure, and it can be untied quickly and easily. It is a heavy-duty bend, highly recommended for towing lines and moorings. Um, and it's really complicated to tie, but I, I got it down. And um, so I took the um, I took the main halyard. And I took the, the bitter end of it and I tied it to the, the bitter end of the, um, of the jib um, sheet um, with this uh, Carrick bend and now the main halyard is coming out here into the cockpit to the winch. Um, um, the reason I had to use a Carrick bend was because there's no way I can reach up to where the, the, uh, the sheet attaches to the jib without taking the jib down and I, don't want to, I didn't want to take the jib down. Um, I'd rather tie that line. So that works. Um, what else did I do? I, uh, I, uh, I guess that's it. <laughs> it felt like a lot more. Um, I'm exhausted. And it's only day two. And, uh, it's Sunday, November 8th at, uh, 11. 48 a.m. New York City time, and I haven't made a recording in a while because uh, it's been it's been uh, quite difficult. Um, a few days ago, uh, at night, um, the winds increased uh, slowly, increased. Uh, throughout the day and, uh, and then at, at, uh, some, at some point late at night um, they increased to uh, 35 mile an hour wind steady uh, at which point I, uh, I knew it was time to reef I mean not reef but hove to and I managed to, to hove to um, um, and, uh, and just after I finished hoping two with a, a double reef main and staysail, um, the winds increased, uh, to above 40 and, um, gusting as high as 56. Um, it was unbelievably windy and I was terrified. Um, it was so windy that uh, I, I really did not want to go out on the uh, aft deck and get the Jordan Series Drogue out of the box. Uh, you know, I had the whole procedure down on how to do it, how to deploy the, uh, the Drogue, the Jordan Series Drogue, but I knew it would involve uh, 15 minutes um, out on deck and I couldn't even really imagine spending that much time in that heavy wind. Um, um, the boat was heeled over so more than I've ever seen her heel over. Uh, you know, rail in the water, hove to, and uh, and big waves crashing on, on deck, and uh, the, uh, the 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 air, the the, the, the the seas turned into this. This, uh, this whipping mist um, above the above the waves, and it was just too 
too terrifying. Um, so <laughs> instead of putting out the Jordan series drove because it would take so much time, I got the big parachute that I had up in the sail locker and uh, put a long line on it and uh, clipped in, went out, deployed that, uh, tied it to the stern cleat and got back inside. Uh, I hove to like that um, for the next 24 hours uh, headed in a northeasterly direction at about three knots and uh, uh, I was truly terrified scared that that a rogue wave would flip us or that the rigging would, would uh, break or I'd snap a sail and wouldn't be able to be hove to and that the situation would get worse um, I stayed uh, down below in the salon uh, on a bunk settee and uh, saw that the compression post uh, underneath the mast uh, inside the cabin was bending which was which was terrifying <laughs> I, uh, I kept imagining that it would uh, that it would break that it would snap and that the uh, and that the deck would, uh, would, would come in come in uh, and the mast would come into the cabin um, I uh, was just totally freaked out. I uh, I imagined that we that I might have to abandon ship, and so I got the life raft out of the sail locker and uh, put it up in the galley. Um, I grabbed the EPIRB and uh, and I realized that I really was not prepared for abandoning ship into the life raft because I had no kind of abandoned ship bag. With, uh, with food and water and flares and anything. Um, all I had was a life raft and the EPIRB, so I imagine that if I did have to abandon ship and got into the life raft, um, I would uh, probably starve <laughs> um, or, or, uh, or freeze um, or die from the, the, the heat, uh, the sun. And uh, it was terrifying. Um, after, uh, after being hove to for about 24 hours, I realized that, uh, I was, uh, by then I had been carried about, uh, 40 miles northeast, and, uh, from the, the weather maps that I had before I left New York City, it showed that the heavy weather would be concentrated towards the northeast, so I was going the wrong direction, um, and, uh, and, uh, and at night, I decided that I would be safer if I hove to on the other tack and, and thus would drift in the opposite direction back towards the southwest. And I did that without, uh, without a problem. Thank God the, uh, the parachute line didn't wrap around the prop. That's what I was most worried about. Uh, then I hove to uh, heading... Um, drifting in a southwesterly direction for the next, I don't know, 12 hours or so, and uh, things calmed down. The seas were still big, um, but the wind had subsided to uh, about 25, uh, 20 to 25, and it was nighttime, and I didn't want to get underway again. I was just too exhausted, so I... Uh, I figured I'd uh, continue hoping to until uh, until until I got light out enough, um, and uh, and I slept uh, um, and I uh, didn't even keep a watch for ships or nothing. I just slept like a rock um, as I hoped to and drifted southwest um, uh, until until daybreak, and uh, and then uh, I got going again. And uh, it's been uh, one uh, night since, uh, one night has passed since then, um, and uh, the winds have completely died, and the sun's out, and uh, I've been motoring. Um, most of this trip, except for the Hope 2 part, has been under power. Um, I've 
been unable to adequately sail downwind um, and uh, go in the direction I needed to be going. Um, um, uh, God, you know, being that terrified <laughs> kind of puts things in perspective um, um, in the big overall scheme of things. And I, I think I've, I've, uh, I've come to some personal realizations uh, about uh, things I want to do with my life. <laughs> and, uh, um, but, uh, but I'll keep that to myself. <laughs> um, and the, the, uh, the, the, Position. 